seconds. Oh, 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 okay. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver as you join me here heading over to Wales for a little bit of a Welsh video. So I thought we would jump over to Wales and just try driving around Wales and seeing if the Welsh roads are any better or any worse for our Tesla autopilot system. So we're going to be running through here and going up to Monmouth. Uh, which I'm not actually sure is if it's in the UK or not. I don't know. I don't know where the border is really for Wales on that side. It's somewhere here, I guess. Um, but obviously, we've gone across the bridge and we are now Croeso i Cymru, which is welcome to Wales in Welsh. Now the bridge is a beautiful view, and with autopilot, you do get to have a look at the view a little bit more, which is quite nice. But I'll tell you what, these roads are shocking, like absolutely shocking. Like I'm being jumped right. I don't even know if you can hear me over all this but I'm being bounced around and everything by these bad roads but autopilot has dealt with it actually without a problem and we're going to be coming up behind this lorry and just slowing down because we're going to be taking the left here off the motorway but I wanted to show you a little bit of motorway driving as well you're brave cycling across there she's going to get blown off surely so we're going to be coming off left here with this truck of which obviously autopilot sadly can't do just yet the 2019 system might have been able to do that, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't have that yet. And we're going to be going all the way around third exit over to Monmouth. Now, I used to live in Wales. Uh, I'm half Welsh, as I've said, and I'm a big fan of Wales. And the roads here, I absolutely love. I think Wales has some of the best roads ever, probably second to Scotland, to be totally honest. And we're really blessed with some nice roads. But sadly, we do also in Wales tend to have a lot of speed cameras and stuff like that, which just kind of ruin the fun. But oh well, I guess you win some, you lose some. But we're going to be coming off and taking these back roads up to Hereford, uh, or at least that's the way we're kind of going here. So let's take this exit here. And I think actually, as we come out of this, yeah, so now we're entering Wales, Croeso Gumri. And look at this, the roads are nice. We've got nice lines. Autopilot is like, yes, we can go. So let's plug it in and have a little whirl, shall we? Now I do know these roads, so I do know where to look out for and what's like a, you know, something dangerous for it or whatever. And I actually did a really early video on these Welsh roads as well. So you're gonna see that too. But we're happily cruising down here without a problem. We're actually catching up to this car, but I wanna stay I want to stay this distance. So this is about three cars back. Let's just have a little look. That's four cars. So yeah, this was three cars back, which is just about right in my opinion. Now, the Welsh roads are very, very windy. We're going to about to swing out here, I believe. Uh, no, it's pulled us back in. That actually worked out quite well. And we're going to go and undertake this guy at this speed. So I'm just going to slow it down so that we don't like fly past and undertake because we are coming up to a roundabout and I'm going to be using autopilot as if this was a normal journey and I wasn't recording it because this is how I would use autopilot on a normal journey or well, this is just me driving normally I guess Okay, so we're into a 30. Has it picked up the 30? Yeah, it has, and so is autopilot. There we go. I actually put on tack first and then autopilot afterwards, just to make sure it stayed at 30. You see what I mean though? Here in Wales, this is like a more common thing, is that you have a lot wider road and then you have the bigger pavements, but as soon as you come out of any kind of town here in Wales, this like shrinks to the tightest roads and complete opposites. Uh, but that's why I think I really like it because it has such a variation in types of roads. Now, again, we have got red lights ahead and it's not gonna stop for us. And we are we were actually going in that right-hand lane there, or at least the autopilot wanted us to. It was pulling us over to that right-hand lane. When it can actually see these, this is gonna make a huge difference. I know stateside, it's very blocky. So, you know, it's forward, stop at lights, forward, stop at lights. That's really easy, I think, for autopilot to figure out. Whereas here, with roundabouts, and we don't quite have the same easy like road network as, as the Americans do, I think we're gonna have a lot more trouble here trying to get autonomous driving to be a widely accepted and working kind of thing. So this is actually uh, a disappearing verge here. And we're going down a gradient, no left line, but we do have a pavement, which hopefully should keep the car nice and true. 
and that's exactly what it's doing. Staying very nice and true down the middle of this road, sticking to the speed limit without a problem. That's definitely something I've noticed best in Tesla's uh, TACC, in the Traffic Aware Cruise Control. Compared to all the other cars that I've kind of had, this is the only cruise control system that I trust and use a lot. Whereas before, they used to slam on for kind of anything, to be totally honest. Okay, so we've got a lorry actually in the road, and that's gonna cause the Tesla to slow down and probably come to a halt. There's no one behind us. I'm gonna come off it here, and we're gonna go around it. Again, would an auto car, or would an autonomous car do that? Because that is a double white line, so it's kind of, it's questionable whether it would actually do that or not. So we could go straight here onto Monmouth, um, but I have this thing where if I see another car going that way, I go a different way because I don't want to get stuck behind it. I know it sounds a little bit silly, but let's go this way. And also actually my sat-nav was telling me to go this way. So we're going to go down to 40 and we're going to start taking these kind of country roads around here at 40 miles an hour. That's like a, you know, a general speed to take most of the roads around here, except for these that get really close and that curb on the left it's just a little bit too meaty for me to hit. If I, if I was to touch that, that would have been horrible. So I definitely don't want to hit any of those. And we've got some pretty insane um, tops of verges there that you can't see over. Now, this is a tight road, don't get me wrong. But on the camera, this looks so much tighter. And we're slamming on. So I've got no one around me, so I let it do that just to see. And you can see I'm not quite sure why it wanted to speed up. Um, yeah, not quite sure why I wanted to speed up there. Now, these roads, we've had loads of troubles on before in terms of it just doesn't quite like them. And I understand why. See, look, look at that. See, we're going, we were going kind of straight again. It's almost when we come to some of these corners, because they're so tight, and I think because you can see the road over the corner, autopilot just doesn't really like to give it a go. It kind of looks at them, and, it, and then it starts to kind of go straight, and it's, it's just not sure. We've actually got a left line here, which might be favoursome. Now what I'm going to do is, if I actually touch the accelerator very slightly, you can see that the car doesn't speed up as much as it did before. Again, oh, just too close to that left side for me. Um, yeah, but I would normally drive 40 up here without a problem, but this for, for the autopilot system is maybe a touch out of reach just yet. But we've got that left line again has appeared making this drive a lot easier. I'm actually gonna speed it up a bit. I've just realized I'm doing 35 and I've got a couple of cars behind me. So I'm gonna start speeding this up a little bit to 40. But I don't think 40 feels rushed down here at all. there because it was getting too close to that left side for my liking again it was as soon as that line disappeared it got way too close to the left oh my okey pokey off he goes and people say autopilot's the dangerous thing around here mm hmm Ah, see, that was going too close to that left. So if you don't hold on to the wheel on these kind of roads and hold, you know, hold true and hold exactly what you would expect to do in that situation, it really would veer off and potentially, potentially crash and potentially cause some damage to the car. So you, you do really have to keep on holding on when you're doing this. But obviously this isn't what Autopilot was designed for just yet. So we are pushing it above and beyond its call of duty, that is for sure. But again, look at that, the traffic aware cruise control working nicely around those corners. That car, that, that Golf just overtook there. Did you guys see that on the camera? I don't know if that picked it up. Oh, okay, ding dong, ding dong. But that actually uh, overtook that van in front on those corners. Now this really is an extreme test. The roads are really, really tight. There's no left line. The road on the left actually just drops straight off. We've got a trailer in front of us, so not a normal car for it to track. How is it gonna do all of this? It's dark, it's it's like, you know, obviously because of the trees, it's quite hard to see down here. But so far, it's going pretty well. We are going fairly slow, and we're keeping quite close to that left line. And I'm, I'm pulling, 
I'm actually pulling the car to the right to try, just to try and make it stay straight. But the problem is, I think the car in front, because it's got the, oh, we just went down into a little verge there. Because it's got this trailer on the back that goes over the white lines, I think it's blocking the, the line and the camera's getting confused. It's a lovely chill drive though through these foresty trees and it's actually dealing with it really well. Considering we're following a trailer, which isn't obviously a normal car, and it does keep on covering up the, the, the middle lane, the middle line every now and then this trailer. But it's always the same thing with the with Tesla Autopilot. I want it to be slightly more to the right. I know that might sound odd because it's closer to the oncoming traffic, but we are always so close to the left that I feel I'm just gonna fall off almost. And that would be a lot worse than on the other side, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna put it up to 40 just so that we stay behind him and regulate speed from him. But to be honest, would I be going much faster than 40 down these roads? Probably not. I'd probably, I'd probably drive this at 50, to be totally honest. I would, probably wouldn't do it at the 60. So yeah, this is probably a, a 50. So this isn't too bad. But being behind this trailer gives us that kind of slowdown we need around corners and stuff. So hopefully it will help us autopilot a bit better. But I don't want autopilot to be, yeah, it works really well if you sit behind a slow trailer. That's not, that's not autopilot. Okay, took that corner really, really nicely. Ah, here we go. We've got a controlled variable up ahead. Well, not really controlled. It's a cyclist. And this is going to intrigue me massively. Oh, we've got several cyclists. Okay. So how is the car going to deal with this? Is it going to see them at all? Is it going to try to go round them? Or is it just going to ram into them? It's, it's probably not going to see them. And if it does see them, it will treat them as a motorbike, which would be interesting. But so far, they're not really going fast enough. Um, they're not, sorry, they're not going slow enough for this van, I don't think, to overtake. So we're actually going, oh, we, I can feel it pulling me left here around this corner. Still in autopilot here, guys. Still in autopilot. And we're coming left here. And it actually did that on its own, which was really nice. There was no car coming. Now there's a van behind us. So we were, I knew that was all safe. But it followed the lines by itself. And it's doing all this by itself quite nicely. Okay, we've got some cars on the road of which I think my car was actually just going straight into. I don't think it was trying to get around them. And here we have got some cyclists that we have to just go all the way around, give them plenty of space. There we go. And we're back. So let's put that back into autopilot. Sit behind our trailer friend and bring the speed up to about 40. He seems to be picking it up a little bit. His rear wheels are really wide as well and I'm quite nervous even about them, but I should probably be more nervous about autopilot. This is where I think autopilot gets a bit confused. You can see the wheel going a little bit left, a little bit right. When those roads open without any kind of line or anything to tell you that the road is about to open, it does struggle. It's not the biggest fan of it. But then on these roads again, it's, it's not too bad. For the last little while, this has been pretty uneventful. Um, we're just kind of, we're pretty much just following this trailer, which is keeping our speed nice and low. And we're just, yeah, we are literally just following it straight on from behind. This is gonna be quite interesting. So we're coming up to obviously a stop here with a red light and we need to go onto the other side of the road. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm actually gonna use autopilot on the other side of the road. Is this gonna work? I have no idea. I guess this is now going to cock up and say no, but it didn't. It was going straight, so it just wanted to go into that. Is it gonna work? Oh, it's working. We're on autopilot on the wrong side of the road. It's actually, and it works. And it, it works really without an issue. That is so odd that it even does that. Why would it work on the other side of the road? See, that's where I, people say that you can kind of push autopilot and you shouldn't be allowed to. It's very true, you can push autopilot to do things. Obviously, it's not meant to autopilot on the other side of the road, but it will do that because all it's doing is following those lines. Oh, 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 okay. 
Yeah, has it aborted? Yeah, it has aborted. Why did it abort then? I'm not 100% sure. Now this is gonna be interesting. Not only have we got an insane hill coming up with some very tight turns, our friend here is turning off. So I'm gonna bring that down to like the 40 mark, let him go on his merry way and see, is the Tesla gonna be able to tackle this hill? I don't think it will. I will be very, very surprised if it does. Uh, oh, it's doing, it's doing it all right. Yeah, it's doing all right. There we go. It's not quite as tight as I was expecting. The corners are pretty extreme though. I'm gonna bring it up to 35. It's coping very nicely with this hill actually. And all the way to the top. Pleasantly surprised. That was really smooth considering it was going up such a steep gradient and had some really quite tight corners and no left line. So I am actually really, really surprised about how well that did. But whew, see that? That was, and then it does that. That's why you've got to be on, on point when you're testing autopilot in these kind of conditions because that there was happy to go straight on for some reason after doing something so, so well. And here, mm, oh, we're okay. Ah, oh, we've got a little post van though in the road. And I don't think I'd be able to go around there. Oh, there we go. Definitely wouldn't want autopilot to, to try and put me through that little space. That would have been um, pretty, pretty questionable. For the rest of these roads though, it feels very nice and smooth. We had an issue here previously where it, it goes left, you see, and not right. It needs it needs to veer right there. But it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to think ahead. It, I think it does go right at the last second, but it's not comfortable, and that's what we need. We need a little bit more comfort when using autopilot. Peace of mind. I think that's what I meant by comfort. Okay, did that really nicely. Just coming into this 30. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that completely slammed on there. Not sure why that slammed on. That was that was doing that pretty smoothly, I thought. And then out of nowhere, it just slams on for me. Yeah, it's struggling down here. I'm, I'm starting to think that actually a downward gradient is what seems to be causing the problem. Up, when we're going up gradients, it doesn't seem too bad. We've got a bus here that's slightly over on our side just because of its width, but it seems to be okay for that. See again, going slightly down a gradient, getting quite close to that left line. but doing it relatively smoothly. Now, up ahead, there is something in the road. I'm not 100% sure what it is. I'm gonna slow down to 30 and just see, what does the car think of it? I'm pretty sure it's just a plastic bag. Yeah, it's just a plastic bag. And no, okay, the car did nothing about it. We've got a dead body on the road and some crows. And again, that's not what, it's not a real person, don't worry, it's, it's a rabbit, poor thing. Um, but yeah, doing this road, which is a 60 at 30, is quite slow, but it's doing it without a problem. Let's speed it up to 40, shall we? Just to get a little bit more realism. And even at 40, it's done that really nicely. So we're gonna pump up this straight to a 50. This is what Autopilot was made for, these kind of roads, the, the straight roads with nice lines. It's just blissful to have this computer actually drive for me. These are still country lanes, but they're wider. They're a lot easier to navigate. The roads themselves are a, a little bit bad condition at the moment. But you can see that the road, the corners are nice and clear. The lines are nice and clear. And you know that when there is no issues with the Tesla and the Tesla Autopilot is 
just working its working its magic. Now we do have a tight corner coming up here, so I'm gonna bring us down to 40 and then 35 just before it, which should get us around this corner nice and safely. We've got a big lorry coming, but that's not a problem. I'm ready to brake, of course, if anyone uses this junction. No one has done, and that has done that without problem. Now this is where it gets obviously a little bit tougher for autopilot. This is going downhill, and on the left you can see it is miles down, like it is a big hill. But also we've got the sun shining through the trees, which will make the camera very hard to see. Um, and the road is getting a little bit tighter as well. So this is a real, real test for it here. But it seems to be doing it pretty well. I'm just gonna pull it down to 30 for these corners. but I have got cars catching up behind me, which tells me that I'm driving slower than the average human would drive down these roads. So that's where I questioned, should I speed it up or should I should I keep it slower? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it pulled off there. So with my I, me turning it, apparently was too much. It wasn't gonna turn there itself, so that's interesting. Let's just get back onto, okay, hold on. We've got a car up ahead that seems to be indicating Okay, he's just turned off, that's fine. And back onto autopilot we go. So yeah, we're coming down the hill now. You can see we're coming out into this beautiful setting here uh, in Wales, which I believe down there, that is Monmouth. And it's, it's such a beautiful setting. Now we've got a car pretty close to the left side of the road here, but not a problem. The Tesla didn't worry about it at all, which is good to see. And we're still tracking these lines quite nicely. And cruising down a hill. I mean, this is a big hill. I mean, this is me naturally driving these roads. This is probably how I would naturally drive them. And yeah, I do do, I'm looking now, I'm doing 40, like 45, 50, I guess. Those are the kind of speeds that I would do down these roads if I'm driving by myself. And the van is uh, still staying behind us, so. I'm assuming that's what he's doing as well. So 45 is, a, is an okay speed, I think, for driving down these kind of places. But we're gonna be entering Monmouth in a second, which is our destination. And I'd love you guys to comment down below what you think about this drive. Now, we actually did this drive uh, on one of the earlier videos on the channel. So if you wanna go back and check it out and see how it did then and how it compares to how it did now, feel free and let me know. Do you think it did better back then when we first tested it? Or do you think it did better now, now that we're testing it uh, today in, in nice conditions uh, and whatnot? So I'm gonna bring it right down here because it gets insanely tight. But believe it or not, this is still a 60. Who has set this as a 60? I have no idea. Uh, I'm gonna bring it down to 25 around this corner. And then I'm coming off because we have to stop here and turn right. This is such a pig of a junction. Ugh, literally hate that junction. You just gotta floor it. You just gotta floor it out. What I'd really like to set as a test for my Tesla and autopilot testing is to actually be able to come and do this complete journey all by autopilot. So you can see it's going a little bit funny at the moment. It's just because of the corner that we're going around. I would love it to be able to do this whole journey from my house down at Swindon. I do this journey up to Hereford a lot because that's where my daughter and partner live. Uh, I will be moving up here soon, but I'd love it to be able to do this whole journey completely by itself. Now we are going quite fast into here, but we need to slow it down because it comes into a 30. The roads, I, I think it would be able to do it, but there's definitely some bits and some sections, obviously, that I would have to take control at, like probably this roundabout and stuff. I can't, I don't think it's ever gonna be able to do roundabouts. I'm not 100% sure, but I doubt it. Um, but these kind of things, I would love it to be able to do this whole journey by itself. I think that would be really cool. And I think it's something that it could do in the kind of near future, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, this has been Tesla Driver. We are now in Monmouth, which is our destination, and I'm going to continue on to Hereford. 
I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and comment down below anything else you want to see from me about Tesla's autopilot, auto parking, auto steer, Tesla anything. Just give me a comment. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Drive safe.